All right, so for this lab, the first thing we're gonna do is do some setup. Um, so we need um, PF Sense, which will be the router. So we need to download two things. Uh, before I do the download, I'm gonna first check if um, my machine is able to run the the virtual machines correctly. Um, so I'm gonna open VirtualBox. Um, so once VirtualBox opens, ignore that. This is what the window looks like. Uh, I'm gonna make a new virtual machine. And what I'm gonna check is down here under version, it should say 64-bit. Um, eventually we'll, we'll select Linux, but if you only see 32-bit versions, you need to enable um, virtual extensions or virtualization extensions in your BIOS. So see the other details about that. Um, it will not work if you do not do that step first. Um, you won't be able to run the virtual machine. So that takes a minute to do, um, to configure the computer. So you should do that first, um, and then we'll go and get the rest of the stuff. So the first thing we need is PFSense. Um, so we're going to select a 64-bit image, and we'll say a CD image. So we then download that. Um, this will be a dot gz file so we actually need g unzip um, if you have um, 7 zip for example this would work but on these computers we need something that we can um, run without installing uh, which 7 zip always runs an installer so we're going to get g zip for windows um, so this link is in the lab but what we want is this binaries um, so this is just a zip file with some binaries in it Um, and all we need to do is this, wherever this file was downloaded, we're going to go and um, put uh, gnzip in that same location. So just let it automatically start. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to show show this location and all I'm gonna do is so you can see here I have this pfsense file um, I'm going to extract I just need this gzip.exe I don't need anything else actually and I'm gonna extract it to that same location um, from there what we need is we need to start a, um, a terminal so I'm going to um, go to my uh, command uh, prompt and hit CMD to open a terminal. So when we get a terminal, um, we can then go to the same directory, downloads, um, and hit gzip. So this will then give us the, this file. Um, so gzip, you can see if we use the dash D option, we'll decompress it. So we'll go gzip dash G PF sense. Um, and so this will finally make a dot ISO file. And this is the file we need. Now, the other thing we want to download um, while we're downloading stuff is I'm going to download something called Lubuntu. So this is just a light version of Ubuntu. Um, so Ubuntu is a very popular operating system. Um, this is just a little bit uh, smaller, so it's a tiny bit easier to deal with. Um, so you could get, uh, we might get a smaller version if you want, but I think this will work, this Lubuntu 10. 18.10, uh, so I'll just hit suitable for most computers, Lubuntu desktop 64-bit. Um, so this is saying 1.6 gigabytes here, for example. Um, this one doesn't matter as much. We just need any Linux version, so I'm actually going to download an older version that's smaller. Um, so I'm going to get version 16.04, 64-bit. Uh, that's a little smaller, so that should download a little quicker. Um, you may find others, you might find a faster mirror, but basically we need some other Linux distribution. Now while that's downloading, we can go ahead and set up pfSense, because this will take a minute. So let's get rid of all this. Um, what we need to do now is we're going to open VirtualBox. So this is what VirtualBox looks like. Um, and we'll hit new. So this will let us create virtual machines. Um, and what we want to do is we want to specify that we're running like a Linux. It doesn't matter too much what we say here. Uh, a Linux distribution. And I'm going to call the first one router A. Um, we're going to make three routers. So if you see the lab, you'll see the desired configuration. Um, 
and there we go. So we're going to use all kind of defaults. So it makes a virtual hard drive, um, virtual disk image, dynamically allocated. We call it router A, the disk as well. Um, we now have this virtual machine. So before we start it, we want to configure a few settings. Um, the first thing I'm going to change is some of the network settings. So to do this, um, we hit this big settings button and we go to the network tab. Now, basically, we can turn on as many adapters as we want. Um, we're just going to turn on two adapters for each of these routers for now. Um, so adapter one is OK, so it says attached to um, NAT. So there's different options how it connects to um, the host network. So the first one is going to be the host network. Um, we're going to change it for all the, the remaining ones. Um, the only thing we're going to change here under advanced, uh, there's an adapter type. I'm going to change it to pair virtualize. Um, we could do this different ways, but this, um, this will let us sort of standardize across all of them. And the th same thing for adapter 2. So adapter 2 I'm going to turn on. Um, we're going to change it to para-virtualize. And we're going to make a virtual network. So we're going to say internal network. Um, this will let us connect different virtual machines together. So I'm going to call this in net 1. So again, see the, um, the diagram in the lab for what all these networks are. And we're going to start this thing up. So it now has um, two network cards. Uh, and we want to turn it into a router. So when we hit start, there's, no, um, there's nothing for it to boot. There's no information. So it's asking for a startup disk. Um, so what we need to do is we need to find that uh, file that we downloaded and extracted. So this pfsense-ce, um, the release one. So this, this we had to extract from the .gz, and you hit open and start, and it's going to boot. Um, one thing here, so you can kind of let it run automatically. Um, eventually, you're going to have to virtually remove this, this drive um, from the device, because remember, this is like a CD. So it's a virtual CD. When it's installed, um, it's kind of... Uh, running the in installation information. Um, all right, so we can close some of these these warnings here, and you can tell it not to tell you again if they get uh, annoying. Um, it and so with the virtual machine, uh, it's going to tell you this every time that your uh, mouse and keyboard get captured. Um, so the right control button, basically the, the control button on the right side of the keyboard, you have to hit when you want to get out of the virtual machine. So, um, and basically we're going to say accept, and we just want to install. So we're going to install pfSense, and we're going to use all defaults, and we just kind of just keep hitting enter uh, until it finishes. And we let that go. Um, and you notice that now it says, okay, the installation is now finished. Do you want to make any changes? Um, and we hit no, we don't want to make changes. Uh, it's going to reboot now. So what we need to do uh, before we hit the reboot, so I hit the right control button to get my mouse back. Under devices here, um, optical drives, I'm going to uncheck this. So I want to remove that drive um, from the machine. So it won't let me do it right now. Um, because it's saying it's in use, so let's not force it. So I'm going to hit reboot, and then right away I'm going to do the same thing. I'm basically going to go up here um, once the machine has actually unmounted that and uncheck it. So you notice I did that before it actually rebooted. Um, if you're too slow and it, it starts to boot from that disk, that's fine. Just uh, uncheck it again and then reboot the machine. Um, we just want to make sure it's booting from our installed version. So all we're going to do is um, confirm that it actually boots up. We're not actually going to do the configuration yet because we want to change. Um, we're going to have to end up changing some of the configurations for different devices. But uh, we can just let the initial setup run. Um, and once we get here, so it said should VLANs. 
Um, so if we have virtual LANs, should they be configured? Um, and we're going to say no, we don't want to set those up right now. Um, and we need to know, so okay, there's, there's two interfaces. So up here, it shows two interfaces on the device. Um, which interface is what? We can see from the network settings um, which interface is what. So one of them is like the, um, you know, going out to the, the network if this was router A. Um, so you can see the, the MAC address ends with DE. So we can see this first one, VTNet 0. Um, so if we say VTNet 0 is the WAN interface and VTNet 1 is the LAN interface. Um, so it's going to do this assignment, so that's fine. Um, and then configuring. So it's going to configure everything and eventually give us to our main menu. Um, so once we get to our main menu, we can sort of take a look at what this default configuration is. Okay, um, so here's the main menu. So you can see it's giving us uh, the IP addresses of our various um, systems as well as the, um, you know, the ability to do different stuff. So for example, um, we could ping a host if you wanted. So you could ping dial.ca, confirm that that's working. Um, we could do some configuration changes, uh, get a shell, anything like that. So for now, all we're gonna actually do is shut down. So if I use option six, it's gonna shut down the system. Um, because this is just one router, we need a bunch of them. Um, so then PFSense shuts down. And we wait for that to finish. And then we're just going to clone this guy. So then I hit clone. Um, so what we need is we're going to make router B and C. So I'm going to say router B. Um, and what we might need to do uh, is we want to generate new, um, new MAC addresses for all the network adapters. So one of the issues we had is that I actually um, had a, um, a NAT. It was sharing some of the, the MAC addresses with the host. We can't have that anymore. Uh, and we're going to actually change the, the network configuration for router B and C. So make sure you hit generate new MAC addresses for all network adapters. Um, hit next. And do a linked clone. So this saves some disk, disk space by doing a linked clone and will make our life a little easier. So I'll hit linked clone. We now have router B. So what I'm going to do for router B, this is where we need to configure the, the network a little differently, is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn this one into an internal network. Um, and I'm going to attach it to internal network one. So if you remember, that was the, the other side of router A. And then adapter two, I'm going to turn into internal network two. Um, so this is where we're going to make our little network is we're just going to have three routers that can route between them. So I'm then going to clone router C. And we're going to do the same thing for router C. Generate new MAC addresses. Linked clone, clone and then change our network around. So again, this guy is now going to point to two and we're going to have a new network, network three. Um, so to configure routers B and C, we actually need our network to be up first. Um, so we need to turn on router A first, then turn on router B, then turn on router C. So we can turn on router A, for example. Let's start that. Um, and we'll let it boot. So once it fully boots, we should then turn on router B, wait for it to fully boot, turn on router C. Um, the reason we need this is that basically each, each router is going to get um, information from the previous router. Now before we actually boot B and C, we should finish configuring A because we, we kept everything as defaults um, and there was some configuration required from the lap. So uh, the defaults are okay for router A, but they're not for router B and C. The reason being that we need to change the IP addresses for routers B and C. So let's just 
confirm this is booting. Um, and the issue is we'll need to change this IP here. So let's boot router B. these. So once we're at our B boots, um, what we need to do is change the um, the IP addresses of the second interface to be the uh, the desired IP addresses and we need this so that we can actually do all of the uh, the routing between these various um, devices. So we're using these sort of as like a fake, um, you know, fake I, uh, LAN and WAN uh, type devices. Um, obviously, we're not going to have a lot of interesting traffic um, on the network. All right, so what we want to change here um, is the second interface. You'll notice the LAN and WAN have the same IP address range. Uh, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, for number two, let's change the the interfaces so we're going to change um, the LAN IP address so let's say to LAN change that guy um, and let's make it you know 192.168.3 for example dot one this is what I'm choosing um, as I'm gonna make this subnets IP or, the, or this networks um, yeah, this net network subnet part. So we're going to change that IP. Um, we're going to have a 24-bit subnet. So this would be pretty standard. Um, and a gateway address. There's no gateway because this is the LAN. So we hit enter. We're not going to do an IP right now. Or IPv6, sorry. The other thing we want is we need a DHCP server on this LAN because then we can connect other hosts to it. So hit yes here. Um, and we're going to give it a range. So remember the, the IP we're in. So we're in, we're in the three um, subnet. So 3.100 we're going to start at. And we're going to end at 3.200. So devices will be assigned IPs in that range. Um, and we can hit yes to this. All right. So now when we turn on router C, and hit enter, get back to the menu. When we turn on router C, it should get um, a three dot, you know, a hundred on its um, WAN interface. So we'll turn that guy on. And if we go back to router B, we should actually, for example, be able to ping. We should be able to still reach uh, a host eventually. Um, so you can see I ping dal.ca and that still worked. Okay, so that's good. And now let's go back to router so you can see the other thing is I can click on each of these and just hit show to quickly get um, to get them running. So we could also put them side by side. I don't have very much room in my capture here. Um, so I'm just doing that. So the final thing I'll do uh, for the router setup is to get the um, get the IP address configured for uh, this network. After that, we're then going to add clients to it, um, and we can do some other uh, configuration of the the PF sense so that you can sort of see what other options are there. Um, and you can expand this network larger if you'd like. So that's kind of extensions of the lab. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do option two again. I'm going to say two, and we want to change the LAN. So the WAN was assigned automatically, and I'm going to make this uh, three. Wait, no, the previous one was three, four dot one. So this is four dot one, 24 bit subnet, and same deal as before. Turn on DHCP um, and make sure this range matches uh, the same IP address I assigned to it. Yes. There we go. Um, so now we have a network and we need to actually understand a little more what's going on. 
and we can still th check things are working. Um, you might notice too, like the, the ping timing will change a little now. So if I go to, from where to C to B, um, you may see that it's a tiny bit slower. And, and this is because we're kind of running through virtual machines here. Um, it wasn't much different, but, but you can play around with that. So see the next um, section of the video, which will show adding the client to writer C um, and then doing trace route back uh, to confirm the network. And finally, uh, playing a bit with some of the PSSense configuration, just very basically.